السلام عليكم guys welcome back now I will explain the theory of the lab which is called carbohydrate scheme for example I have a tube here this tube it include unknown let's see there is an unknown solution here if this solution is carbohydrate or not I need to understand this which is called carbohydrate scheme Tab which if it's a carbohydrate which type of carbohydrate it's monosaccharide or disaccharide or polysaccharide so here I need to differentiate between the carbohydrates. We have here very small scheme. We have a very good scheme, very generalized scheme. We have many tests for the scheme of the carbohydrate, but here only I will explain three tests, only three tests. But again, I'm telling you, I need to tell that we have many tests for the carbohydrate scheme. Many tests could be reached up to seven or eight tests, but I will explain only three tests, how to differentiate between them. Number one. I will start with Molish test. And you need to understand this Molish test, very important. It's very detectable for all type of carbohydrate. Yani if you did a Molish test for any tube and it contain any type of carbohydrate, it will give you a color. It will give you a positive color. So here, if this Molish test is for, huh? for what, shabab? All types of carbohydrate, including including all types including the mono, the dia, and the polysaccharide. So all type of carbohydrate will give you a positive, positive test with the Molish test. Okay, so what is the Molish test? They said in the Molish test, the principle of the Molish test, the principle of the Molish test, that a CHO group, this in the carbohydrate, will be dehydrated, dehydrated by H2SO4 that will add. After that, when it became dehydrated, it will give you a violet ring with an alpha naphthol. And this is the alpha naphthol. It's in the Molish reagent. Where is it? In the Molish reagent. Tab, how we can perform the test? We are performing the test as follows. We will add 5 ml of the sample, 5 ml of your sample. This is unknown. Oh, this is the unknown sample in the tube. I will explain it in the practical session. Plus five drop, five drops of Molish reagents. This is the one which contain the alpha nafsul as I said here. After that, I will add, I will add on the wall of the wall. If here I have five ml of the sample. I have here five drop of the uh, Molish, and I will add two ml on the wall, slowly adding. Two ml of H2SO4, slowly adding. Two ml of H2SO4. What I will have, I would have, which is called violet ring. It's a very nice ring. Just the violet ring. I will explain it, you will see it in the practical. Violet, so you have violet, I will add violet, ring if you have violet ring means if it's positive means carbohydrate if it's negative means non carbohydrate do you agree type now i got the result for example positive so i would like to know which type of carbohydrate mono well dia or poly so which type of them that's why i will go for the second test the second test I've let here, the second test we will perform, which is the iodine test. The iodine test I've let is specified for, ha, specific for, is specific for polysaccharide. Ah, because in iodine, here, usually, the starch, polysaccharide like starch, and the starch, usually, when we add iodine, we will get which color, shabab? Dark blue. Dark yellow, dark blue color. Is it clear? Mumtaz. So here, for example, I will perform an iodine. If we have, if we have positive dark blue means dark blue means starch. خلاص. We finished here. It means starch. Tab. What if we get negative? I mean, no change. So here, either mono or di. I would like to differentiate. So to differentiate between the mono and dia, I will go to the third test. Third test to differentiate only between the mono and dia, 
بيسموه البرفويد برفويد تيست والبرفويد تيست سبيسيفيك فور ها سبيسيفيك فور يا محمد فور مونو ساكارايد اها يعني if it's positive means مونو ساكارايد طب وات هابن؟ it oxidized the carbon positive 2 to the carbon او CO carbon positive 1 and will give you red precipitation So in this case, what I will do in the perfoid reagent, I will take the 3 ml of the reagent and 1 ml of the original sample and I will keep it in the water bath for 5 minutes. So I will take 3 ml of your sample in the tube here, 3 ml of the sample plus 1 ml of perfoid. 1 ml of a shabab of perfoid plus 1 ml of perfoid. The agent, and I will keep it in water bath, boiling water bath, boiling water bath for five minutes. For each about five minutes. If you have red precipitation here, red precipitation. If you have red precipitation, means positive. Means each about positive. The positive means, huh? Positive means, as we say, mono saccharide. Mono each about saccharide. So if it become negative. Means, means that no, no precipitation means diasaccharides. So that and to differentiate here, what do we have in the mono? We have in the mono we have glucose, galactose, and fructose. So that. So what do we have in the dia? We have maltose, sucrose, sucrose, and lactose. In this case, also we can differentiate between them. We have other tests to differentiate, but we will stop here. We will only perform three tests. So this is the practical, I would say, the theory of the practical that the one you are performing, inshallah, you will perform in our lab when you come back soon. We miss you guys in our lab. You are empty, Allah, when I with you. Bye bye and see you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu everyone. Uh, so this week's lab is about the identification of various carbohydrates. Uh, Dr. Uh, Matkur has already explained the theory part, so this is the practical part for uh, today. So, uh, what we are going to do, uh, we are going to test for the monosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharide using different reagents. We will start with the first experiment using the Molish uh, test here. So, the Molish test principle. Um, is uh, stated in the in the in your manual. Uh, uh, the Molish test is considered to be a sensitive chemical uh, test for the presence of the carbohydrate. So um, it should give a positive result for all carbohydrates. This is the reaction uh, which has been already uh, illustrated with Dr. Matkor. And we'll start now with the uh, practical part. So what we have here, we have the Molish reagent, the concentrated sulfuric acid and test tubes and the carbohydrates uh, which are present in uh, different uh, tubes. So, uh, the first thing that we have to start with is to prepare six uh, different uh, test tubes, as you can see here. So, every test tube has different uh, uh, reagents. The first one has the glucose in 1%. The other one, the second tube, has the fructose uh, for 1% um, uh, as well. The third tube has the uh, sacrose. The fourth tube, are our unknown so we need to find out uh, in the unknown one and unknown two whether it's carbohydrate and uh, what type of carbohydrate is it a monosaccharide is it a polysaccharide or disaccharide the sixth tube has the uh, water so we will refer back to our uh, table here so open it so what you can see here we have to add 5 ml of glucose fructose sacrose unknown one unknown two and the distilled water to those six different test tubes. Once we are done, we have to start adding five drops of what? Of Molish reagent. So the Molish reagent is here, as you can see. So we have to add our uh, Molish reagent to all of the test tubes. So how, how many we have to add? We have to add five drops to each test tubes. Once we are done, then we take those test tubes under the hood. What we have to add now? The sulfuric acid, the concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, um, and okay. So now let's add the five drops of the molish. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five again to the last two, uh, two tubes one two three four five one two three four five so once we are done we have to mix all the tubes and then we take the whole rack under the hood to uh, to add the sulfuric acid so now we are going to the under the hood at this step we have to add the concentrated sulfuric acid since it's corrosive we have to work carefully under the uh, under the hood so i'm going to add to, to the first test tube, or let's say to the first two test tube, the sulfuric acid, and we have an example, so we'll not like uh, waste the time. Um, we have to use the uh, graduated glass pipette to add the sulfuric acid. And as I said, we have to work carefully. So what does it do? What does the uh, sulfuric acid do here? It's going to dehydrate the carbohydrates and it will form the product of furfural. The furfural, so can you see over here, we'll discuss it later, 2 ml. So observe the purple ring, this is the product. Then we have to add another 2 ml, so can you see the purple ring? Clearly over here, it's like an interface between the aqueous solution and the sulfuric acid. So this is the result. So if I'm going to add to the rest of the tested tubes the concentrated sulfuric acid, how the tubes are going to look like? So just watch here. So here is the result. So can you see the interface here? This is the first test tube which has the glucose. And as you can see, there's like an interface of the of the uh, sulfuric acid. It forms the purple ring here. And down, we have the concentrated sulfuric acid. At the top, we have the aqueous solution. This is the uh, uh, the chemical reaction which takes place over here. So this the first uh, test tube has the glucose. The second test tube, what does it have? Fractose. And the third one has the sucrose. The fourth test tube has our first unknown and the fifth one has the second unknown type the sixth uh, test tube has what the water so the water has no carbohydrates and that's why we cannot see any ring type what about the unknown one and unknown two so in the unknown one we can see the uh, purple ring and this purple uh, ring indicates that we have here carbohydrates but what type of carbohydrates is it mono is it di or polysaccharide we need to find out like, what about test tube number five which has unknown uh, tube we can't see anything here there is no herbal ring so we can now exclude un uh, unknown two from our tests and then we have to proceed with the unknown one so we need to find out whether it's a polysaccharide or a disaccharide or monosaccharide. So this is the, the principle here. So again, what makes the interface here, which forms the uh, purple ring, uh, is that uh, at the first step, uh, what happens? The carbohydrates get dehydrated by the means of the sulfuric acid. So the result will be, or the product is going to be the furfural. Now the furfural will react with the alpha naphthol, which is present in the modish reagent. Accordingly, it will form uh, the product of the ring purple uh, product. So we can see it over here. So this is uh, as a result of the whole reaction of the Monash test. In the first test of the Monash test, we have confirmed that our unknown one is the carbohydrates. Then we have to find out whether it's polysaccharide, uh, monosaccharide, or a disaccharide. What we have to do, to test for the polysaccharide specifically, we can add now 1 ml of the unknown to a test tube. So here's the 1 ml. And we add it to this test tube. And then just add two drops of iodine. So what happens? Let's see. 
then mix it. And as you can see, there is no purple color that indicates it's negative for polysaccharide. So we are left now with two options, whether it's a monosaccharide or disaccharide. What we have to do right now, we have to test uh, for, uh, the, uh, for these two kind of carbohydrates using the Parfoy test. So now we'll move into the second uh, or the third uh, test here, which is the Parfoy test. And Parfoy test will specifically uh, results in a positive reaction with the, with the monosaccharides. So if we got a positive uh, test, it should be, uh, form by the end a red precipitate of the uh, copper oxide. So uh, what is the setup of this test is as the following. So refer to your manual again. And as you can see here in this procedure, it shows the table or the setup of your tubes. So what we have here, we have five test tubes. To the first test tube, we have to add the glucose. To the second, we have to add the fructose. The third is the sucrose. And the fourth test tube is the uh, distilled water. Uh, now here, the unknown is in test tube number four, which is unknown one, since we excluded unknown two. Then, uh, as you can see, so after you add one ml of the glucose, you have to add five ml of the uh, barfoid reagent. Then after that, mix your tubes and we have to place them for around two to three minutes maximum in the boiling water. And we have to take it out after this incubation, let it set at the room temperature, and we have to examine for the positive monosaccharides. If it's positive, it will form a reddish precipitate of the cuprous oxide. Okay, how to do this test? Actually, we started by adding the parfoid reagent, 5 ml. So we added 5 ml to all tested tubes. We have it from one till five. So it's already marked here. So we added the parfoid reagent to all tested tubes. Then what we have to do? We have to start adding different carbohydrates. So we have here the glucose. So I add one ml of glucose to the first tested tube. It's already set at 1,000 microliter. So this means it's one ml. This is the first one ml. Okay. So this is the first. Then we add the second one, which is the... Yeah. So let's close this one. So our second uh, reagent here is the fractose. Can you see the fractose here? And the third is the sacrose. This is the third. The fourth tube has what? This dead water. Again, we add this dead water. To the fourth test tube and the last one is our unknown so we have just confirmed that it's not a polysaccharide so we have unknown one unknown one so once you are done what you have to do you have to mix your tubes and go to the water bath which is boiling so we can mix it like that take the whole set to the to the water bath and then after that let's assume that around um, uh, three to five minutes maximum has passed then after this incubation we will refer back to our setup and see which one is the positive. So, can you see here to the first test tube, we can see a red precipitate of the cuprous oxide. So this indicates a positive result for what? For a monosaccharide carbohydrate. So this is 
uh, a monosaccharide because it's actually glucose. What about the second test tube? Second test tube has fructose. Fructose is a monosaccharide, and you can see here the positive uh, cuprous oxide precipitate. The third test tube, what does it have? Sacrose. So sacrose is disaccharide, and as you can see here, there is no precipitate, so that this is the right result. What about our fourth test tube? In the fourth test tube, we just placed water, and this makes sense. There is nothing here. There is no precipitates. What about our unknown? So now we can confirm that our unknown one has what? A monosaccharide. So it could be glucose or fructose or galactose. This is the three options that we have it. Okay, so now we find out that our unknown one has what? Has the monosaccharide carbohydrates. This is the end of our uh, experiments. I hope you understand. Uh, don't forget to refer back to your uh, uh, the uh, theory uh, video which has been recorded by Dr. Muhammad and it illustrates as well the practical part. Thank you.